Make-A-Wish employees what was the most strangest thing a Make-A-Wish kid asked for and actually received? I worked at a hospice and we had a wishing program. One our patients, 24-year-old with brain cancer, wanted to hold a sloth. Apparently, sloths are very nervous creatures, so it's a little tricky to actually hold one. I found a local company that does visits to schools and whatnot who had a sloth. Sloths only poop about once a week and the sloth could only travel the day after he pooped. Because they get nervous. Any longer than that and the sloth has stress diarrhea. So basically, we had to wait until the sloth pooped and then set up the visit for the next day. The sloth pooped on Thanksgiving. So we set up the visit for the next morning. The patient was able to hold and pet a very sweet sloth. The patient died about three weeks later. And I am very happy I was able to help give her some joy in her final weeks. Edit. Wow. Guys. I did not expect this to blow up. Thank you so much for the awards. The hospice I worked at had a special program called Faithful Wishes for any of our patients. Regardless of age. As the volunteer coordinator, fulfilling these wishes was part of my job. I do believe there are other non-profit organizations that grant wishes to adults. But nothing as large as make a wish. Yes. The sloth was tame and lived in an animal preserve. He would also visit schools and retirement communities. Schedule permitting. And yes. I absolutely learned more about sloth bowel movements than I ever wanted to woman shrugging. In Wizard 101 there's a quest with an NPC named Brandon. Named after a make-a-wish kid who played the game. And his request was to design a side quest for the game. You meet Brandon and go help him clear out this dungeon with two really fucking hard bosses. Was a lot of fun. At the end you get a gem you can socket that lets you summon Brandon into battle as a follower. Pretty cool. Not sure what ended up happening to Brandon. But it's really cool that thousands of PPL have gotten to enjoy being a part of his wish tbh. 1. To be a merman. A boy mermaid. He got a tail and swam in the giant tank with other mermaids at the aquarium. 2. To play football with, the red team. No pro or college preference, just had to be red. USC made it happen. HTTPS. Vimeo.com slash 4063568 3. To be a, cool kid. Got a limo ride to the mall. Red carpet entrance with cheering fans. Signed autographs. Shopping spree for clothes. Five years old, so cute and very cool. HTTPS. U2.be slash genvembeanvolk. 4. To be Robin. Not Batman. He said he wasn't ready for that. Went on an epic adventure fighting crime with Batman. HTTPS. Vimeo.com slash 77458547. I worked at a Lego retail store in the 2000s and Make-A-Wish approached us for a child with terminal osteosarcoma who wanted to be in the store for a day. Lego unfortunately denied the request, which surprised myself and the rest of the staff because Lego was a pretty great company. Staff decided to honor the request ourselves. We closed the store early on a Sunday, then invited the kid and family in. He had a full run of the store. We collectively paid for like $1,000 worth of toys for him to take home. And just spent the entire evening building with E he wanted. He died a few months later loudly crying. Not make a wish, but my brother got terminal brain cancer when he was 18. He was given 3 to 6 months to live. Back then his only wish was to be an NFL player but he was 5 feet 8. All heart. He was just like Rudy in that Notre Dame football movie. He fought it for 6 years. Somewhere around his 22nd birthday he and I were talking about having something worth living for. I told him it didn't matter what it was but a vision for the future that he would fight for was. 
important and encouraged him to find something to give his life to. We went on a vacation soon after that. And because we were broke from medical bills and four years of battling cancer as a family. This was a huge deal. We hadn't had a family vacation for a long time. A family friend put us up in their beach house and gave us some money to have a good time there. My brother came alive on the trip. It was so impactful to him that he came home and decided to start a non-profit organization. He called it, A Week Away. It was very similar to make a wish, terminally sick patients apply and benefit from an all. Expenses paid vacation with their family or group of caregivers. That was a big deal to him to include the family because if you've ever gone through something like that, you know it's not just the patient who suffers and loses their freedom. It's everyone they are close to. He worked his ass off to start the organization. He formed it and began sending families to places like the Outer Banks and Ocean City and other East Coast beaches. A week before he died, he launched his first big month-long fundraiser. He passed away knowing that he had raised enough to send like 10 families on respite weeks. It was like he was passing the baton off to others who could keep on fighting. The org is still going strong today. If anyone is blessed to have their health and a sweet vacation spot you'd like to donate for. Occasional use by sick people all coordinated by an awesome organization. I'd encourage you to reach out to the A Week Away folks. You get to play a part in people's lives like the awesome people helping in these Make-A-Wish stories. There was a Make-A-Wish kid in a class one taught once and their wish was to tour a pickle factory. Pickles were their all-time favorite food and they wanted to see how the sausage was made so to speak. Apparently Vlasic rose to the occasion in a major way and she had the time of her life. Chefs of Reddit. What's one rule of cooking amateurs need to know? A lot of the time when people add salt to a dish because they think it tastes flat. What it really needs is an acid like lemon juice or vinegar. Smell is very similar to taste. And if you're not sure about combining various spices, open the bottles and smell them all together. Taste the food. Salt, pepper and acid will brighten up almost any dish. If an otherwise wonderful dish is just missing something, add salt, pepper and lemon juice. Then reassess. You can always add, but you cannot take away. Not really a cooking tip, but a law of the kitchen. A falling knife has no handle. What's the best insult you've heard without swearing? Straight from Shakespeare. I wish we could become better strangers. To think you were the fastest sperm. I had a teacher tell some kid. Nothing you have to say is of any consequence. To anyone. He was. An odd teacher who kinda talked like that. But it was his version of savage. The room lost its shit in unison. Asterisk you are so mercifully free from the ravages of intelligence. Asterisk, time bandits. You sound like a pizza cutter. All edge and no point. You're impossible to underestimate. What city would you never, ever, ever live in? Cairo. Egypt. 19 million people. 23 million cars. No stoplights. On a three-lane road. You have five lanes of traffic. Left shoulder. Straddling first white line. Middle lane. Straddling second white line. And right shoulder. When we visited, our tour guide told us we needed three things to drive there. Good brakes. Good horns and good nerves. Cars are bumper to bumper. And then people are crossing the street in between the cars. Walking. In wheelchairs. Pushing baby strollers. Then along beside our bus. Comes someone riding a donkey. Crazy. Soldiers with machine guns on the street corners. We even had an armed guard on our tour bus. Norilska, Russia. 
https colon slash slash story maps dot esri dot com slash stories slash twenty sixteen slash norilska slash closing parenthesis Pyongyang, North Korea Kabul, Afghanistan Winnipeg. The Simpsons summed it up perfectly. We were born here, what's your excuse? Brampton, Ontario, Canada. Subscribe, my brothers.